sometimes I come across things and can't help to facepalm. That was definitely the case with the Salon.com article titled, Corporate Welfare State, GOP Tax Plan, Showers Millions with $17 Billion Tax Break. I read this and almost laughed myself to death. I never thought that some people could be so economically illiterate. So let's dive right in. The biggest winners of the Republican tax plan are, surprise surprise, the richest earners in the country. This is a sentence made to elicit an emotional response in order to make you envy the rich. Let's be clear about what is actually happening here in non-emotional terms. The Republicans tax plan was essentially a tax cut across the board. Therefore, anyone who earns an income will potentially keep more of the money from their income. And the way our tax system works, the more money you make, the more taxes you pay. The more you make, the larger the percentage you pay in taxes and the more raw dollars you pay. Therefore, if there's a tax cut, someone who earns more will see a larger amount of cash in their bank accounts. This is common knowledge. But of course, simple concepts can be worded in a way that makes you sick to your stomach. In news that should surprise nobody, the Joint Committee on Taxation report released on Monday showed that the wealthiest earners in the nation will take in more cash and reap the majority of the benefits in 2018 as a result of the tax plan passed last December. The way this is written, it makes it sound like there is a bunch of money and the rich are just forking it all up. Hidden deep in this paragraph is the concept I explained above, but again it is written in such a way where it makes you envy the rich. It makes you believe you have been cheated. Why are these rich people being given all this money? This isn't the case. The wealthiest will get more money back because they pay a higher tax rate. This again is a simple concept. Not only that, what benefits? Seriously, what benefits are they being given by having less money taken from their income? Does that qualify as benefits? The overhaul to the nation's tax code, which was led by the Trump administration and congressional Republicans, included a deduction that ranges up to 20% for pass-through businesses, as the New York Times explained. While pass-throughs is a term often used to refer to small businesses, a Treasury Department analysis found that many are not actually businesses at all, and 69% of the pass-through income goes to the top 1% of households. Yes, most of the tax cuts will go to the top 1%, because the top 1% pays most of the taxes. Let's put this in perspective. The top 10% pays 75% of all taxes. In 2014, the top 1% paid 39.48% of total income taxes. In total, owners of these structures will be showered with a 40.2 billion in tax breaks. Of that 17.4 billion, or 44.3%, will go roughly to 200,000 Americans, making $1 million or more, NBC News reported, although $3.6 billion, or 8.9%, will go to a similar number of taxpayers who earn 500000 to $1 million. You're right. The rich are just getting showered with money. Make it rain. There's just all this money lying around, and it's just falling into the pockets of the rich. But wait, there's more. Further down the line, the wealthiest earners will be showered with even more generous tax cuts. By 2024, the tax deductions will amount to $60.3 billion, and those making $1 million or more will account for $31.6 billion, 52.4% of that, NBC noted. Yes, let me repeat, the more you make, the more you pay. Therefore, when there is a tax cut, the more you keep. While it's true that other taxpayers, such as roughly 9.2 million, who earn between 100,000 and 500,000, will account for 15.7 billion 
in deductions and roughly 9.7 million filers in that income range will get 16 will get 19.6 billion in 2024. It is worth pointing out that the tax plan is still vastly disproportionate. Do you know what else is vastly disproportionate? The amount of income the rich have paid in taxes. Of course, President Donald Trump and his fellow GOP lawmakers marketed the new tax plan as a major overhaul that would improve the lives of middle and working class Americans. Some Republicans expressed regret after voting for it, but it was too late. None of us have covered ourselves in glory, Senator Bob Corker, Republican from Tennessee, said recently at a, administration, at a Senate Budget Committee hearing according to the Tennessean. This Congress and this administration will likely go down as one of the most fiscally irresponsible administrations and Congresses that we've had. He added if it ends up costing what has been laid out there, it could well be one of the worst votes I've made. Yes, this administration won't be known for its fiscal responsibility, but it has nothing to do with cutting taxes, well at least not entirely. It has everything to do with increased spending. This administration has cut taxes and increased spending, thus increasing our deficits. You know why? Because most Republicans are spineless and won't dare cut m spending for military and entitlements. A new Wall Street Journal NBC News poll highlighted that only 27% of all adults believed the tax plan was a good idea, while 36% said they believed it was a bad idea. To no surprise, Republicans were the only majority to believe it was a good idea. 56%. Still, that sentiment is not at all in indicative that Republicans won't dare to enact even more tax cuts this year. Of course the tax cuts were a bad idea, because we couldn't get our budget under control. Of course Republicans supported the tax cuts. Why wouldn't they? If Democrats cut taxes, like John F. Kennedy did, Democrats would probably support tax cuts. While Republicans would bitch about the deficit. This is politics as usual. It's kind of like how Democrats complained about the deficit when the Republicans cut taxes. Since when have Democrats cared about the deficit? I can answer that. When the other party is in power, the same was true in reverse. Meanwhile, the Trump administration has made efforts to gut billions from welfare and social services programs, which will hurt the poorest Americans. Departing House Speaker Paul Ryan has also touted the same, as he has aimed to slash Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security. Do you want to know what else hurts the poorest Americans? The whole system, incentivizing uh, dependency on government entitlement and welfare programs, regulation that bottlenecks entrepreneurs and small businesses, corporate income tax, occupational licensing, high income tax, high taxes in general across the board, and inflation. There's more. There's much more. And let's be blunt. Some of the responsibility falls on the individual poor American. We need to tear down the barriers to entry and allow the entrepreneurial spirit of the average American to soar. We need to reform our education system. Our education system teaches young people that college is a requirement to have a well-paying career. It's not. I'm not saying don't go to college. I am saying look for other options and consider them. You can join the military and learn skills through there. You can go to trade school. You can go to college for a useful degree. You can start at a company and work your way up. You can become an entrepreneur. We also need to reform our legislative assemblies on the federal and state level. It's hard to start a business. Regulations, fees, and licenses bottleneck entrepreneurs and small businesses. You can't compete against large corporations. Freedom is the only way to progress toward monarchy, oligarchy, feudalism, collectivism, and centralization is not the way we progress. Individualism, cooperation, and family is how we move forward. 
Those are the keys to creating a wealthy and just society where every single American can make something for themselves. And that's it. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you have a good day.